You've counted all my sorrows You collected every tear Every battle, every trial You carry me You were there in every victory
Good morning, church. Welcome to our X online worship service today. Um, so glad to see all of you tuning in this early, and thank you for waking up early just for this service. Um, I hope that all of you are awake by now. If not, let's just use this time to prepare our hearts and mind for the worship later. Also, before our service starts, we just want to use this time to pray for the service and also uh, to invite God's presence to be in our midst. And also pray for the word later to be such a blessing for whoever that's going to be watching this. And yeah, so no matter where you are watching this at, just know that uh, God's presence is all we need. So yeah, so let's pray together. Can I invite um, all of you to stand with me and as we pray. Our Father in heaven, O Lord, thank you, O Lord, for today. Thank you, O Lord, for giving us this opportunity, Lord, to be able to still meet online, O Lord, virtually, O Lord, to have service, O Lord. Um, despite of what's happening around us a lot, despite all the restriction that has been put upon us a lot, thank you Lord for giving us the resources Lord to still be able to um, make service happen a lot. Lord, we thank you also Lord for um, different ones who has availed their hearts a lot to uh, serve you and to make this online service happen a lot. So Lord, I pray that Lord, may your double portion of blessing Lord to be upon them a lot and not just that Lord, I pray that as they honour you Lord, may you honour them back as well Lord. Lord, I so want to just invite Lord, your presence Lord to be with us today a lot. Lord, may you feel a lot different household Lord with your Holy Spirit Lord. May it be so strong, O Lord, that um, no one can neglect, O Lord, your presence, O Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord, I just pray that may your Holy Spirit, O Lord, saturate each and every room right now, O Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that as you do that, Lord, the atmosphere will just change straight away, O Lord. Lord, may you do that, Lord, right now, O Lord. And Lord, I just pray that, Lord, May today's word, Lord, be such a blessing to everyone, Lord. May it speak so clearly, Lord, that each and every one of us Lord, will be able to get it, Lord, straight from you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that um, different ones, Lord, will also be able to open up their hearts, their minds and ears, Lord, to listen to you today, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that, Lord, um, may your word, Lord, um, be so tangible today, Lord. Pray that, Lord, people, Lord, will be so touched by your word today as well. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the word that you've put into uh, Pastor Dave's heart as well. Thank you for that, Lord. And Lord, although it's a pre-recorded service, a lot and message, Lord, but Lord, I know that it will still be relevant to us, Lord, because Lord, it is your word, Lord. Lord, I just pray for um, different ones, Lord. Pray that let... Um, our hearts be ready to accept and receive today. And Lord, I pray for people Lord, who um, probably been distressed a lot from um, the situation that is happening around us or maybe some, some people might have been far away from you or like some people might have lost their excitement for your kingdom. But Lord, I pray that Lord, today be the day Lord, where you pour Lord, your fresh fire upon each and every one of us again. Oh Lord, I pray that you will refresh our soul. Lord. Help us Lord, to be able to be ignited Lord, in us again oh Lord, in our spirit a lot so that Lord, uh, we will be able to strive a lot for your kingdom again and Lord I just um, commit this service to you Lord I pray that may you take over the service a lot pray that Lord let it be an open heaven service today a lot Lord uh, I just declare Lord, a winning service today as well Lord I pray that um, lives will be transformed today um, there would be healing that's happening and there would be change that's broken today in your name oh Lord I declare Lord I ask this all in Jesus name Amen Right now, let's spend some time to pray for our international church plants that's flashed up on the screen right now. As you can see, X is part of a global family. We have churches all around the world in Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, Thailand, Myanmar, Indonesia, Australia and Botswana. So we are really privileged to be part of such a big family and every week we have each church plant praying for us. So 
as part of a family, we also want to do the same and keep them in prayer. So for the next few minutes, can I encourage you to pick one of the church plants to be prayed for and I'll close this in prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you Lord for giving us this privilege Lord to be part of such a big family oh Lord. Thank you Lord for giving us the opportunity Lord to see oh Lord the work of your hands oh Lord all over the world oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I just want to commit each and every church plans to your hands right now. Oh Lord, may your uh, blessing be upon them Lord. May your anointing power be upon them and Lord I pray that Lord may you give them oh Lord your direction as well Lord let every church plan oh Lord put you as the center Lord of it all as well Lord can I commit each and every leaders into your hands as well Lord may you bless them a lot and give them a lot your wisdom a lot Give them a lot, your power as well, Lord, to lead the church a lot. It's not easy, a lot, to lead a whole church a lot, but Lord, I pray that you would just guide them and lead them, Lord, and give you, uh, give them your wisdom as well, Lord. Lord, I just want to pray for a lot um, the churches have, that has been planted in specific locations, Lord. I pray that they would just be such a impact, Lord, to the community, Lord, that they are planted at, Lord. Pray that they will be able to influence, Lord, the people around them and also lord pray that people lord, will just uh, be able to know more about you lord and lord i just pray that lord lives lord will just be safe lord through your hands a lot with the churches that's planted in different locations a lot lord i just pray that lord you continue lord to lead us lord and guide us a lot and lord i pray that um uh, there would be unity, Lord, in the church as well, Lord. Not just within the church, Lord, but I pray that, Lord, amongst different church plans as well, Lord, I pray that there will be a unity, Lord. As, Lord, um, we would need, Lord, help from each other as well, Lord. Help us, Lord, to know how to support each other as well, Lord, as, um, as when... Uh, whenever people need help, Lord, I pray that we would uh, lend a helping hand as well. And Lord, I just pray that Lord, help us to be so strongly united, Lord. And not just that, Lord, can I pray that, Lord, may you provide, Lord, for each church plan as well, Lord. Every church plan would have their different needs, Lord, but Lord, I pray that you provide for them, Lord. May it be resources, Lord, I pray that you, pray, you would provide that, Lord. May it be um, uh, housemanship, workmanship, Lord, I pray that you provide Lord. Morning Church! So good to see all of you here this morning and you know it's so good to be able to be in God's presence. Amen? You know the word of God says let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And you know we want to just worship Him this morning. We want to praise Him. We want to give Him all the praise that He deserves and we want to lift the name of Jesus high. Amen? So you know just like scripture says you know in the count of three church if you have breath this morning, if you're alive this morning, in the count of three, I want to hear a good shout of praise. Amen. Ready? One, two, three. Glory. 
need a rescue My sin was heavy But chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken You were my healing Now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future My eyes are open Cause when you call my name
Yeah. 
church is declaring Even in this last bridge oh, You move again just now say a big thank you to the worship team uh, for leading us in such a powerful time hey if you're new here you're tuning in to our service for the very first time maybe a friend um, sent you the link or invited you the link or maybe it, you just happened to chance upon us we want to say a big welcome to you uh, if you're not too shy one you should just send us a say hi in the comment section I would love to just acknowledge you and say a welcome to you as well uh, when all when we are able to meet physically as a church again do come along to any of our services we would love to say hi to you in person as well we're moving on to the giving of our tithes and offering in Acts here we look forward to giving our tithes and offering because we want to worship God by giving the best in every area of our lives including our finances as well you know there are two ways in you which you can give this morning the first one is that you can transfer your tithes and offering into the X London bank account the details of which is flashed up on the screen before you so please uh, even as you transfer please earmark it as TNO in the reference the second option is this if you're not comfortable with transferring it online why don't you set aside the funds if you need be put it in an, in an envelope and when we can meet together physically as a church again you can put it in the offering bag as well we know even as we prepare to give on to the Lord this morning will you allow me to read you a portion of scripture and we can pray together and for the offering amen reading from Proverbs 3 verse 9 it says this Honour the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so that your barns will be filled with plenty and your wards will overflow with new wine. Will you just allow me to pray for the offering and we can give unto the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you again for everything that you have done for us. God, we thank you for every provision that you have provided for us, whether it be in the form of our jobs or the allowances that we get from our parents. Indeed, we know it still all comes from you. God, we thank you for this ability and the, um, the ability and the opportunity to give this morning. And God, today we want to give as a form of our worship unto you. And God, we want to give with a cheerful heart, not of, of, out of compulsion of anything, but because we just want to say we love you with this. So God, we thank you again. And God, God, will you continue to bless this offering for the furtherance of your kingdom in Jesus precious name we pray amen amen while you're giving this morning I have two announcements for you the first announcement is that we'll be having 
homes this week. Hey, yeah, you guys excited? Give me some likes if you're excited. You know, for those of you, maybe you're tuning in for the first time and it's the first time that you have heard this term, homes, and you're wondering what it is all about. Homes is basically uh, our midweek small groups where we come together to study the Word of God together. So why don't you get in touch with your respective home leaders and I'm sure they'll provide you with more details. Maybe you haven't visited a homes before, you haven't joined a homes before and you would like to do so, why don't you just drop us a message on our Ex London Facebook page and we'll gladly connect you with the right homes as well. Now the second announcement is this, a flash up on the screen before you is our prayer and testimony money link you know during this time where we are unable to meet together we would like to still support you in prayer as well and if you're if, if you're shy to tell if you're shy to just share your prayer request with anyone why don't you just log into that link send in your requests anonymous, anonymously if you like and we will be more than happy to join you and support you in prayer also on that link is a, is a section that you can uh, sub submit your details on your testimony if you have any testimony why don't you do that as well as we would like to celebrate the goodness of God over your life together now we want to celebrate birthdays as well if it's your birthday this week starting from today all the way to next Saturday the 4th of July hey a very happy birthday to you and hope that you have an awesome day ahead and also an awesome awesome year ahead you know we normally celebrate birthdays in our church by giving you some chocolates um, but you know we are, as we are unable to meet together yeah we are unable to do so but hey when we can meet together come and see us we'll gladly give you a your birthday chocolate as well amen Hey Church, we've been doing this every week, uh, which is to pray for our current pandemic situation. Um, as you can see um, around us right now, there are lots of distress, there's lots of people losing their job, economy not doing great, and people who are worrying, and yeah, lives that's been affected. So yeah, we just want to use this time to pray. As the Bible said, there's a lot of um, power in prayer so yeah we just want to use this time to pray for the country the nation the economy your friends your family the nation and let us not just stand there and watch but let us just stand in the gap for our family friends the nation and your colleague as well all right can we do that so yeah let's just declare uh, God's peace, God's love, God's power upon uh, this situation right now, God's healing upon this situation as, yeah, our God is God of impossible. So let's do this right now, all right? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for um, all the frontline workers, Lord, that has been uh, putting the hard work, Lord, throughout this pandemic, Lord. Um, the NHS workers, the essential workers, uh, the drivers, the people who are working in the supermarket. Lord, we thank you a lot for their hard work and their effort, Lord, throughout this pandemic, Lord. Lord, we just want to commit them into your prayer as well, Lord. May your covering, Lord, be upon them a lot. May you protect them a lot from all the uh, things that uh, they are in contact with, Lord, because they are in contact with so many people, Lord, so they are always putting themselves uh, at risk a lot, uh, uh, contracting the virus a lot. So Lord, I just pray that may your protection be over them a lot and pray that Lord, they would um, uh, just be able to go to work a lot in peace a lot and not in worry a lot. Lord, I pray that may you fill their worry a lot with your peace a lot. Um, replace it Lord with your peace a lot, Jesus. Lord, I still want to pray for different ones a lot who are starting to going back uh, to work Lord as this ease of lockdown is happening right now more and more people are going back to work and because of that there are more worries um, among people because um, they are contacting with more and more people so Lord I just pray that Lord may you put them at peace as well Lord may you protect them as well Lord pour your covering upon the people who are getting back to work as well Lord help them Lord not to worry upon um, contracting the virus, Lord, but Lord, help them to put their trust in you, Lord, especially, Lord, uh, 
your people, Lord. Help us, Lord, to not lose our faith, Lord, but always put our trust in you, Lord. And Lord, I so want to pray for um, people, Lord, who has also lost their job, Lord, during this pandemic, Lord. As we can see it on the news right now, Lord, more and more redundancy has been happening. Uh, more and more companies can't afford to um, pay their employees anymore. That's why there are more um, employees that are um, jobless right now. So Lord, I pray for them, oh Lord Jesus, Lord. Pray that, Lord, your provision upon them, oh Lord. May you provide for them, oh Lord. As Lord, sometimes it could be really hard, Lord, maybe to even um, get their essential needs. Oh, but Lord, I pray that, Lord, that wouldn't happen, Lord, because, Lord, we have you, oh Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would just provide for them. And not just that, Lord, pray that, Lord, let them be able to get back to work, Lord, as soon as possible as well, Lord. Pray that, Lord, may you help with the economy, Lord. Help you, Lord, to be able to go back to normal again, Lord, where companies, Lord, will be able to afford, Lord, to hire more people and then less there will be less jobless people lord in the world as well lord lord we commit it to your hands a lot we know that only you can do it oh lord jesus and lord i so want to pray for people who are sick as well lord currently maybe in the hospital or maybe not just in the hospital or anywhere lord maybe even um, right now lord whoever that's sick lord lord i pray that may you pour your healing power upon them a lot may you heal lord each and every one of them a lot who are not feeling well right now lord who are having any illness in them lord I pray that we just heal them a lot and lord i just pray for um, people lord, who might not um know you yet lord especially lord i pray that um may you be able to maybe speak to them a lot in their dreams a lot or maybe um send people a lot to them a lot or their family members lord, who will be able to maybe speak to them through skype lord, if they're in the hospital or will just be able to have some way lord where um people will be able to share your gospel a lot to them a lot and um, I pray, Lord, that you wouldn't be missed out as well, Lord. Lord, I know that, Lord, you love them as well, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you would give um, them, Lord, the chances, Lord, that you've given us as well. Lord, I pray that um, those people will be able to hear of your word as well, Lord. And pray that with your word, Lord, they will be able to find peace, Lord, and love, Lord. And Lord, I still want to pray for um, different families as well, Lord, um, who might have family members, Lord, who has passed away, Lord. It's not a really good time, Lord, to have family passing away because um, there are lots of restrictions, but Lord, I pray that, Lord, um, with those family, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will help them, Lord, to uh, give them the courage, Lord, to be able to stand up again, Lord, give them, Lord, the the uh, love, Lord, that they need, Lord, and give them, Lord, the comfort, Lord, that they need, Lord. Uh, it must be so saddening, Lord, to be able to uh, to lose, Lord, someone they love, Lord, at this time, Lord, at this point of time. So, Lord, I pray that uh, may you support them a lot, help them to get up a lot, and also I pray for uh, maybe Christian members a lot around them a lot to be able to uh, strengthen uh, the family members, to be able to pull up the family members, and also to be able to support the family members as well. Lord. I commit them to your hands a lot. Um, I, I, I pray that Lord may your hands be upon this situation Lord. We know that Lord you are in control Lord and and Lord, we shouldn't be afraid a lot. And Lord, we declare a lot that um, there will be a victory a lot at the end of this um, season, Lord. And, and help us, Lord, to be able Lord, to see your goodness and your greatness a lot throughout this season, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for... Um, protecting us Lord, thank you a lot for always being there for us Lord, that we are still um, um, standing here Lord, being, being able Lord to uh, attend this service Lord, we thank you Lord for that Lord, I ask this all Lord in Jesus name, Amen. Hi church, good morning everyone. Welcome to our online worship experience. And if you're tuning in for the very first time, a big welcome to you. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday mornings with us. And I pray that God's peace, God's presence, and His power is with all of you, wherever you are tuning this from, whether it's your room or living room. And uh, speaking of where we're meeting, I just want to give us some updates before I go into today's message. Uh, some of you in the UK, you might have heard that uh, come July 4th, there will be some relaxing of the lockdown restrictions and that some places of worship will be allowed to meet. 
Uh, unfortunately, I would like to announce that uh, X Church does not fall under that category. That category is for places of worship, uh, meaning religious institutions that have their own building, their own brick and mortar building. So, you know, any church that has its own property, they can meet with certain guidelines. But for us who still rely on, you know, renting a hall or meeting at a conferencing center or even a hotel, uh, unfortunately, that still means that we have to go on and be faithful and continue with church online. I just want to clarify this because I know a lot of people have been asking and a lot of people are excited and I didn't want to get your hopes up. I just wanted to be real with you, but uh, let's pray, amen, uh, that things will improve as we have been praying every week. We declare that soon we will be able to meet uh, in person again. Of course, when that happens, we will be giving you uh, further updates on uh, social distancing rules and, and different things that you might need to know for our physical meetings, but don't worry. Until then, we will definitely keep you notified and updated as soon as the places that we meet update us that it is good to have us back again. Amen. Another update I want to give to us as a church, of course, is our missions update. As you know, uh, we are going to be collecting a missions offering come July. And I just want to let you know, church, uh, to spend some time to pray, to seek the Lord for an amount to give. And this amount that we'll be collecting next Sunday will be a separate offering than our usual Titan offering. And this will go, 100% of it will go towards missions. Uh, and uh, I've been updating us on a different missions work uh, in the past few weeks. We've talked about Indonesia, we talk talked about Thailand and how our contributions have helped those two nations in the past. Uh, and last week we talked about Myanmar, potentially something that we can do. And of course today I want to just give us an update uh, about X Church Osaka. That's right, we want to plant a church in Osaka, the third largest city in Japan with 2.5 million people. People. And uh, we are, of course, sending forth an amazing newly married couple. They are our missionaries to Japan, uh, Benji and Michelle. Uh, as you can see, the picture is a beautiful, lovely couple. Recently, they got married. Uh, even though it was locked down, they, they couldn't have the marriage or, or, or no, the wedding of their dreams, but they still decided to get married in hopes that this will allow them to travel to together uh, to Japan, but unfortunately, you know, Japan uh, and Malaysia, where they are based right now, has been under lockdown, and uh, I've been in contact with them, and I just want to update you, church, that maybe our giving uh, in July can go towards the planting of X Church Osaka as well. Amen. Uh, the, the the team, you know, Benji and Michelle, they have been busy uh, at work in, in Malaysia, uh, running, and, uh, you know, meeting different ones in the, this little Japanese fellowship that they have started, reaching out to the different Japanese students and families based in Malaysia. They've been busy learning the language and culture, of course, and uh, they want to go into Japan as students uh, to go to a language school uh, to have student visa to learn the language so that they can better be better missionaries in Japan. And, uh, and I hope that as a church, we can give generously towards this new church plan because as you know, there are a lot of uh, startup costs. They need uh, a place to stay uh, and that place that they are staying in hopefully can become like a church hub where they can do Bible studies, you know, cell groups, etc. Uh, and of course, a place for them to lay their head. Um, but to do that, they will also need like a Japanese, a local Japanese guarantor and also funding. And so while we might not be able to uh, uh, find a Japanese guarantor, Tall. Well, I mean, church, if you have a Japanese guarantor, let us know. <laughs> um, but the least we could do is give towards the work and pray for them. Right now, they are hoping uh, to hear good news from the Japanese government to ease lockdown so that they can fly in. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. So uh, they are hoping uh, that to hear good news soon so that they can fly in there uh, come July or August. Uh, if not, uh, the other window for the school, for the language school is in October. I'm letting you know all this so that we can pray for them. Now that you know how they look like, now that you know some of the challenges that they are going to be 
facing and what they hope to accomplish there and the strategies that they want to go about. Let's keep them in prayer. Let, let, let's pray what we can and, and, and give as well. Amen. You know that currently there's less than 2% of the population of Japan are Christians and we want to do our part to sow. We want to do our part to reach out that one more, two more, three more to be added into the kingdom of God and the church of Christ in Japan. Amen. I'm just letting you know all this so that we can pray along and I pray that you would prepare your hearts to give generously to God come July. Amen. Before I go on, would you allow me to pray for the message today? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you want to speak to us. And God, I pray, Lord, that our hearts will be open to receive from you. Our ears will be open to hear from you and that you will give us the courage to live for you. Lord, we are not here for entertainment or for the tickling of our ears, but Lord, we want to be transformed from the inside out for your glory. Help us to become more like you in everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, if you are taking down notes, um, you know, tell you what, let me, let me do this fun little social experiment. Then I'll give you the title for today's message. Amen. Um, this is a fun little question. I, I, it's, it's a question that I have um, asked myself and I've asked people around me. And maybe if we fellowship together in church before, you, maybe I've even asked you this for fun. Uh, but it's a good heart check. And so let, let's, let's play along. Let's participate along. Let's say one day, um, both you and a friend um, are backpacking, traveling, having holiday uh, in France and uh, in the most beautiful wine region of France. I I've never been there. Maybe the south of France, I heard. That's pretty. Uh, and uh, you're just enjoying yourself, you know, backpacking, cycling, you know, walking through the vineyards and then you meet uh, a friendly French uh, a, a farmer or, or, or villager that, that says that, oh, you're in luck, you know, you're, you're actually very near uh, uh, this amazing little village that has, you know, one of the best uh, 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 restaurants. In fact, in that town, there is a three Michelin star restaurant, you know, specializing in local, regional French cuisine and this will blow your mind and you're going to be blessed and so you take the word of this friendly villager farmer and they go oh, okay okay uh, thank you merci i'm gonna keep walking to uh, the village and then as you walk into the village you know you realize oh you know, you're, you're just in time for an early dinner six o'clock and even though this is a famous restaurant the lines have yet to start and right in front of you in the village square there are two French restaurants, only two, and they're next to each other, right? Now, listen carefully. One of them, okay, both of them look identical, superficially. One of them, you can look right into the kitchen. One of them has a, a, a chef who looks French, you know, whether he is from France or not, but he just looks maybe he has a beret i don't know okay i don't want, i don't want to general i don't be too you know stereotypical but, but but you know one one chef looks really french mind you just looks really french both restaurants look very french on the outside the menus are all in french and when you look into the kitchen one of them looks like a french chef however you imagine a french chef to look like and then on the other one, when you look into the kitchen, uh, you know, there is a chef. He's dressed in his chef white, uh, but he's not French. Uh, maybe he's, well, since I'm, you know, Asian looking, Chinese looking, let's say he's a Chinese or Eastern Asian looking gentleman or lady. It's all right. Uh, wearing chef white standing there. Both look equally charismatic. Both are standing in the kitchen, giving orders to, to other chefs, working around them. Now, let me ask you this question. You don't speak French? There's no way for you to find out. Which restaurant would you go into? Would you go into 
the French restaurant, both are French restaurants, but the French restaurant that has the French looking chef at the back in the kitchen giving orders? Or would you go to the French restaurant with a Chinese chef but giving orders in French still? Now, these two restaurants, side by side, you don't know which is better, you don't know which one was the one that the farmer, the villager recommended to you, which one would you walk into? Think about it. No right or wrong answer. By ties in today's message. I did this fun experiment with my wife, if that's a cat. Uh, and she said, um, the, the restaurant with the French chef, of course. When I asked why, because he looks French. Okay, but why can't the other one be the restaurant that the farmer, the villager was talking about? Because he's not French. But I asked, how do you know whether he's French or not French? Maybe he really loves the cuisine. And then we went on talking about it. And basically, uh, anytime I fellowship people and I've, I've, I've thrown them this question before, maybe I've changed the cuisine of the restaurant. Some, sometimes I say French restaurant, sometimes I say Japanese restaurant, but it's always, always with a chef that looks ethnically uh, traditionally tied to that particular cuisine and the other that is not traditionally tied to the cuisine. And most of the time, the people I talk to, most of the time, would say, oh, I would go to a Japanese restaurant with a Japanese chef in front. I would go to a French restaurant with a French chef in front. Uh, even though I have nothing else to prove uh, my decision except by pure looks only. And you can have this, you know, have fun, you know, in the chat. Let me know which one you will go for. I mean, be honest. Now you might be thinking, Pastor, what's the point? Today's message, the title of today's message is called Unconscious Bias. Unconscious Bias. Now, regardless of your answer, there is no right answer, but it is a question that I have discovered reveals uh, in our hearts our unconscious bias, uh, our bias towards you know, certain groups of people, uh, and so on and so forth. And, you know, with the way things are going in the world today, I just wanted to start with this fun little cheeky question. Uh, because before we as people and as a church can call out the racial injustice and the social injustice and call out the biasness in other people, We've got to learn to call it out on ourselves. Because the thing about this is this, at the end of the day, biasness, racial prejudice, class prejudice, where you judge people on the color of their skin or their education background by what they wear, it's all because of our own biasness, sometimes consciously, sometimes unconsciously. But at the root of this bias is our sinful nature. And, and, and through this exercise, we come to realize that, man, I do have some sort of bias. And no matter how I choose to spin it, that biasness is rooted in sin because the Bible says in Romans, all men have fallen. All men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so I want to talk to us today, like I said, before we can be a church that calls it out, and it's important. It's important that when we see injustice, to call it out. But it's also important for us to call it out in ourselves first. Let the healing start at home. Let the change start at home. Let the repentance start at home. Let's not just point fingers at other people and rage against them, but let's begin to search our hearts and go like, am I also part of the problem and how can I change? But this is not a message to talk about the protests that are happening in the times that we're living in right now. This is a message that I hope can help us because 
just like how unconscious biasness is hurting the world and hurting human relations, it can also hurt our walk with God. It's not just man-to-man -man relationships that can be hurt by our biasness, but even our relationship with God. And so I want to uh, uh, teach us from this passage of Scripture, specifically the parable of the rich young ruler. Some of you might be familiar with this. And uh, this is a famous parable. It's found in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16 to 22. It's found in Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 22. It's found in Luke 18, 18 to 23. You know, when three of the four Gospels talk about this parable, it must be a very important parable. But as I was, you know, preparing this message, uh, processing all that's happening uh, in the time that we're living in right now, the Lord began to speak and say that just as bad as our biasness towards another human being is, we can also have our own biasness against uh, a God and the things of God. And that is going to hurt us even more. And just like how we need to work on our unconscious biasness in the world that we're living in, we must also work on our unconscious biasness in our walk with God. Amen. So, so, so again, the, the title for this message is Unconscious Bias. And I'm going to specifically go to Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 22. I'll tell you why that uh, version uh, is, is my preferred text for today. Amen. Mark 10, 17 to 22. If you're there, can I hear a good amen? Amen. Praise God. And I'm going to read it out. Mark 10, 17 to 22 says this. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do? that I may inherit eternal life. So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And he answered, said to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him and loved him, said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, take up the cross and follow me. Verse 22, but he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Amen. Praise God. God bless the reading of his word. And in this portion of scripture, you have Jesus' interaction with a rich young ruler and uh, this is someone that was maybe from an affluent background, uh, from in a position of authority in the local community, maybe in the synagogue. He had a desire to, to engage with Jesus. He had a hunger for eternal life, but he was also derailed from the pursuit of God uh, due to different things that were in his heart. Unconscious bias. We can have unconscious bias, not just towards the people around us and the things around us, but also in particular, three other things. Point number one, we can form an unconscious bias towards God. This young man had an unconscious bias towards Jesus because it says here in verse 17 of Mark chapter 10, he says, good teacher. And then Jesus quickly replied in verse 18, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that is God. And, and this is by no means Jesus saying that he's not good. This is by no means Jesus denying his own divinity. Instead, Jesus was basically preparing this young man and checking him and saying that, do you really mean what you say or are you saying it because it's the right thing to say? Are you calling me good teacher because you see my teaching and you recognize them as coming from God and having the source of it from God and like the teachings of God? Or are you just being polite and are you just trying to flatter me? And the thing is this, that we can form an unconscious bias in our walk with God because we can either 
be like the young man and not take the goodness of God seriously or we can take the, the goodness of God too seriously. Let me explain, right? So Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God. And then Jesus began to teach him. And so the, the, the problem is that we can be biased to think that if God is good, he will not challenge or correct us. You see, Jesus preempted this young man and said, okay, if you call me good teacher, know what you are asking and I'm going to give it to you. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't commit adultery. You know, don't steal. Don't lie. Don't, 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 you know, listing out at least half of the commandments to him. And many times in our walk with God, we can be like this rich young man. We want God. We want eternal life. But are we willing to commit to all of Christ's teaching? In, in, in my journey as a pastor and in my own walk as a believer, I find that sometimes um, our preconceived idea, and that's what biasness is, you know, it's an inclination or prejudice for or against someone or something. And sometimes we can have a preconceived idea about God and, and, and many times I've met people who say that, wow, God is good. And because he is good, he will only lead me to green pasture. He, you know, because he is good, he will bless me. Because he is good, he will open this door. Oh, oh wow, a blessing has entered my life. This must be from God because only God can bless. And, and, and sometimes if we're not careful, we can form a bias that all things good can only come from God and not only that, must be from God. And so instead of taking time to pursue God, instead of taking time to, to, to seek after his heart, uh, we allow the goodness in life to be the deciding factor. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes we go like, wow, you know, I wasn't looking for this job, but this job came. And because a job equals financial provision, equals financial stability, equals a visa to stay in this country, therefore it can only be from God. But you must understand that the moment God, Jesus said, if I am the good teacher and there's no one good except God, don't do this. Don't. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was immediately checking and challenging this young man. And so we got to learn to balance that. Yes, God is good, but it doesn't mean that God will not correct you. Yes, God is good, but it doesn't mean that he will not lead you into the wilderness. Yes, God is good, but it doesn't mean that he will not Shake your life with uncertainty and allow tragedies to enter. If you look at the Bible, everyone that we admire, every Bible hero, their life wasn't just good, 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 good. Their life was good, oh, valley, good, then tragedy. But through the valley and tragedy and the pit, God was with them. That's the type of, of, relationship we need to have with God and not just box God up in our definition of good because without the pit, Joseph wouldn't reach the palace. Without Pontifar's household, Joseph wouldn't reach the palace. Without the prison, Joseph wouldn't reach the palace. But if Joseph, like the rich young man's idea of God as good as if, if, if just being lip service, then he would not be able to accept some of this pit, palace and prison issues. And so we got to be Christians that says that, God, you are good, but you're good enough to challenge me. You're good enough to correct me. You're good enough to call me out on the wrong things in my life. But just as how it's important for us to, to view God as good, but also welcome his correction, we must also be mindful that just because God corrects, it doesn't mean that he's not good. Because we can fall into these two extremes. We can either go like, God is good and no correction, no evil thing, no tragedy can come from him. If a tragedy comes, if hardship comes, I reject it, I bind it, you know, I curse it. You know, life doesn't always work like that, 
Recently, someone told me a funny story. There was this group of Christians meeting online uh, via Zoom and they were praying, praying and interceding. And halfway through the intercession that was going on so powerfully, uh, the, the, the Zoom meeting suddenly went out, got cut. And they were all perplexed and they were trying to join in on the Zoom again and it just couldn't reconnect. And so they started to, to, to bind and curse and go like, you know, this must be the work of the devil. You know, in Jesus' name, we bind this. You know, the devil must be so threatened by what we're trying to pray. Come on, let's press in until later on. A member realized that, wait a second, I think Zoom, if you're not using the paid version, has a 40 minute limit. And so in that 40 minutes, whether you're praying or doing whatever, it will cut off. And so sometimes we can be too naive to, to, to immediately perceive any form of intrusion uh, as not from God, when sometimes God just, just allows that because that is life. And, and on the other hand, sometimes we can we, we can know the nature of God, that He does correct, He does challenge us, that we form a bias against God that we become so afraid to surrender to Him. And because we know that we are sinners and God is good and our standards don't match up to Him, on the other hand, we can be so afraid to surrender that even though we're Christians and even though we know that God is good, we find it hard to trust Him. You know, let me just give you an example from my own life. I still remember... Uh, when I was growing up uh, as a teenager, uh, I had come to know the Lord. But as a teenager, you 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 know you, you you have crushes. And I remember in high school, you know, I was a very shy guy, and and I would just you know I I, I would have crushes every now and then. I would see a girl, uh, you know. <laughs> You know, it's dumb stuff, okay? Like, I'm just waiting for the bus and then another school bus passes by and I saw a girl by the window and I just, wow, that is just the most amazing girl ever. And, just, and, and, and a little crush would just form and every day I would just long for that school bus to pass. Or sometimes I'll go attend a class or attend a tuition class and I'll meet a, a girl from another school and I'll never have the guts to speak to her, but I'll just admire her from afar and have a crush. And... And even though I was a Christian, and I know that in all matters of, of life and love and attraction, we should learn to trust God. And there was even a, a prompting from the Holy Spirit to say that, well, no, Dave, you're head over heels in crush <laughs> with that girl. Have you tried praying to God? And I would go like, no, 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 no. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. Because in my heart of hearts at that time, I had a feeling, which most likely was true, that if I had surrendered that crush to God, God would crush it. <laughs> God would take it away. God would cancel it. And I was like, I'd rather have that fleeting moment of, of, of you know, puppy love than to not be in love at all. I know, it's sappy, romantic stuff. But, that, I mean, that's just an example from my life where I've gone on to meet so many people who find it hard to bring their issues, their problems to God. And they would rather talk to a friend. They would rather read a book. They would rather talk to a counselor than to just spend some time talking to God. And so many times I, as a pastor, I've sat down with people and they say, God, no pastor, please counsel me. I've got this problem. I've got this problem. I've got this problem. And every time I say, well, okay, good. Let me give you that advice. But hey, have you tried talking to God about it? Have you tried surrendering to God about it? Have you allowed God to come in? And they would just silently look away. And that's when I know, oh, you're afraid, aren't you? And I want you to know, just like Jesus said, no one is good except one, God. God is good. And yes, God is so good that he will check us when we need to be checked, but God is so good that he welcomes our interaction. And so I want to warn us against the other type of bias, which is that we can perceive God to be a hard taskmaster, that we find it difficult to go to him. But I want to tell you, friends, don't have an unconscious bias against God. 
Don't be so biased to think that because he is good, he will not challenge you. Learn to accept the challenge and correction of the Lord because God only corrects those that he loves. Not every no is evil. We don't like to hear a rejection. We don't like to be turned down. But God sometimes closes the door, turns us down, says no to us because he has truly something better or maybe he knows us better and that we are not ready to go through that yet. But on the other hand, just because God loves us and has a track record of challenging us and checking us doesn't mean that we don't learn to be like a child and learn to ask again and ask again and say, Daddy, God, what do you think? Daddy, God, I, I wonder. And allow that closeness to God to build intimacy with Him. Amen. Point number two. Besides biasness against God, we can form a biasness about guilt. Guilt. And in the parable that we read, had a lot of commandments and a lot of do's and don'ts. And sometimes as Christians, we uh, can be like the rich young ruler and form our own opinions about our, uh, our, how good we are, about how holy we are. In verse 19, Jesus responded to this rich young ruler by saying that don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't bear false witness, aka, AKA don't lie, don't defraud other people, and honor your father and your mother. And, and the rich young ruler's reply was, all of these I have done since I was a young child, since I was a young boy. And sometimes as Christians, yes, you are saved. Praise God. And by the grace of God, you've had really positive, you've had a really positive lifestyle, real positive and holy living there. You know, you don't murder, you don't, uh, you don't commit adultery, you don't lust, you don't steal, you, don't, you never lie, good on you. You know, you never defraud and, and you love your parents, you know. And that's great. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can form because of how we uh, have very little issues due to our upbringing, due to our background. Some of us were blessed to grow up in a Christian family with parents who love us very much and sometimes that good living, if I can put it that way, makes us biased to think that we are okay and that we have nothing to improve on anymore. And unknowingly, what happens is that we've been lured into the trap of comfort. And, and instead of realizing that, yes, uh, God has commands, but but I've got so much more to learn and so much more to do. Mind you, when Jesus repeated all this, he was only naming half of the commands. And, and even then, in verse 21, Jesus said, okay, if you say you've done all these things, one thing you still let go, sell all you have and give to the poor. And goes on to say, not only give to the poor, but store up treasures in heaven, pick up your cross and follow me. And, 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 as Jesus said this scripture, as we read earlier on, said the man was greatly distressed and walked away sad and walked away from Jesus. Sometimes we got to be watchful not to allow our Christian wholesome living to form a biasness in us, thinking that we are A-OK, -okay, we do not need to work on any more stuff. This young man thought that he had it all nailed down, not realizing that the key to victorious living is not about keeping rules, it's about following Christ. Jesus said, these are the rules, but sell all you have and follow me. Let us not forsake the fact that salvation is not an event. Salvation is not just, you know, being emotional, falling on our knees, repenting, crying, feeling sorry, Salvation is about following Christ. It's a journey. The Bible says to work out our salvation with fear and trembling and to follow Christ, to pick up our cross daily, deny ourselves and follow Him. So let us be mindful not to form an unconscious bias about guilt and think that I'm fine. You know, it's so funny and so many times I've met people who, who will tell me that they never fast and pray. And I'm, I'm shocked when I hear that because they go like, no, I never fast and press it. Oh, why? I never need to. 
I'm like, man, you don't even realize how much you need to fast and pray. Just like how this young man, you know, he thought he had it all, but he wasn't even keeping commandment number one, which was, you shall have no other gods before me, says God in Exodus. When he was listing up the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, and then he, he thought he was okay, but he but unknowingly he had idols in his life called his riches. He he had another God in his life called Mammon. On the other hand, we can be so biased uh, in realizing that we are sinners that we start hating sin so much that we hate even the sinners. And we hate the people around us that act differently, talk differently, that we hate them and that we no longer have any love and compassion for them. Don't. Let me remind you, biasness can be something that you are against or something that you are for. And so sometimes we are so for the law, for the commands, for don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't bear false witness, don't defraud. We are so for the laws of God that we begin to hate the people who mess up and the people who screw up. And let us learn to have both law and grace. That was what Jesus was trying to teach this rich young man. You say you have the law, great. Now follow me and no grace. Because it is in following Jesus that we realize that these laws, we can never, we can never keep them perfectly. And, and it's only by the grace of God that we are able to keep some of them perfectly. And that we still need Jesus every day. Jesus says, I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. And it's only by following Jesus that we're able to fulfill the law. So you might be watching this and you might be thinking, you know, a lot of uh, friends I know who don't know Jesus all hate the idea of thinking that they are sinners. And that could be a form of bias because we think that a sinner means the worst of the worst. But the Bible says a sinner is anyone that falls short. Like Romans 3.23 says, fall short of the glory of God. And because of that, all of us are sinners. Amen. And so I want us to become Christians that in the area of guilt, you know, let us not beat ourselves over the head thinking that we're not good enough. Let us remember, yes, there's law and it's important to keep the law, but ultimately it is through following Christ. Remember what was Jesus' invitation? He says, sell all you have, store up treasures in heaven, pick up your cross and follow me. Amen. But on the other hand, don't let your righteous living rob you of compassion. Don't let your righteous living lead you into comfort. But always check yourself and go like, God, I need you. God, it is only by your grace that I am able to be free from the different mess and addictions and, and all these things that, that many other people struggle with. But Lord, help me now to not boast. Help me now not to be self-righteous, but help me now to be compassionate. Amen. Point number three, last point. I know I have gone on a little bit longer. It says this, and you know, well, my point is this. We can be unconsciously biased against generosity. Point number three, generosity. Point number one, God. Point number two, guilt. Point number three, generosity. What was Jesus's command? Verse 21 of Mark chapter 10 says this, give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. I want us to learn and, and I believe that this is the word from God as we even prepare to collect a missions offering. What is generosity? This rich young man thought he had no problems with money, but he realized that money actually had a hold on him. So what is generosity? Is generosity meaning someone who does not have uh, uh, issues with, with, with giving? No, it's not about that. Let me, let me read you something that the Lord spoke to me and I wrote down. It says this, generosity is not for people who have a lot. Generosity is about storing up treasures in heaven. What does it mean to store up treasures in heaven as Jesus teaches us? Let me give you this example. If I were to spend 3,000 pounds 
on brand new carpets. Now scratch that, 5,000 pounds. I know that's a lot of money, but that's, that's why it's hypothetical. Let's say I, I saved up 5,000 pounds and I, and I used it on brand new carpets to the church hub. How many of you can guarantee that when you come to visit me again, um, you, you need to take off your shoes? You might be thinking, but I already take off my shoes. Okay, okay. Uh, you definitely know that no spillage is going to be allowed on the 5,000 pound carpets. In fact, you might be surprised to see that, Pastor, I thought you had a dog. And I'd be like, yeah, between the 5,000 pound carpets and the dog, I guess the dog had to go because, you know, with 5,000 pound carpets, I'm not about to allow the dog to do anything accidentally on it. Now, I know, hypothetical. Don't worry, the dog is fine. He's, she's still with us. What I mean to say is this, when you spend a lot of money on a treasure, or so, you begin to prize it, right? And so when Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven, it means give to the poor and, and, and give to God so much so and in, in, in such generosity that you begin to prize it. You begin to prize that investment. You know what I'm saying, right? If, if you just bought a brand new car, right? You spent all of your, your, your savings, you know, on a brand new car, leather seats. You can bet that you're going to be precious about it. And then you don't say no. You're just being unconsciously biased. <laughs> you know? And so what Jesus was teaching is this, right? Until... Until your giving causes you to see heaven as your prized possession, like a treasure, you haven't been generous. Wow. Wow. I mean, when, when I was preparing for this, I was checking my heart because all this while, we can have unconscious biases thinking that generosity is something for rich people, right? Oh, because I'm not rich because I don't have a lot. So whatever I give is fine. God can't possibly be mad with that. After all, I'm giving all that I have. I'm just giving my two mites because two mites is all that I have. But it's not about that. It's about how we give. And, and, and sometimes we, we, we can allow our bank account to limit our generosity because we think we don't have a lot. Therefore, we think it's okay to give very little. And giving very little away doesn't hurt us. And we create this unconscious bias to think that I'm doing okay. I'm being like the woman with the two mites only to realize that no, it's not about the amount. It's never been about the amount. It's about the heart. Until we give and give with a heart and we, until we begin to see value in the eternal things. And because when Jesus was talking about treasures in heaven, he was by no means saying that there's going to be a bank account in heaven. There's going to be a, 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 treasure, a, a trophy closet cabinet in heaven. No, no, no. He's saying that, you know, give to the point where heaven becomes your treasure. Are we giving to God to the point where, you know... All we have belongs to God. And that's why we say heaven is our treasure because we have nothing left here on earth. I'm not saying give until you're bankrupt, but I think it's a matter of the heart because when it comes to generosity, we can either be okay with giving too little or we can be justified to think that it doesn't apply to us because it's a rich people problem. No. Generosity, you know, it says here, could it be? in our unconscious bias that we realize that we are not as generous as we think. Friends, as I close, I'm learning as I'm preparing this message that there's really Jesus' teaching always talks about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, and the, and, and, and the world. And in other words, our giving can either enrich all that we have, our possessions can either enrich the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the world. And generosity means giving to enrich the kingdom of God. And so I, I want us to check our hearts again. Amen. I want you to also know that generosity is about money, but it is not limited to just money. 
Amen. It's about your energy, your talent, all that you have. Sometimes we're scared to share, thinking that nah, no, nobody would, would care, thinking that, oh, no, this is mine. Or we, I've met people who go like, you know, I've got testimony, but I don't want to share it to church because this is my personal testimony. Granted, maybe you got some, some, some reasons for that. But for some of us, we, we need to learn to be more generous. We need to learn to be more generous in our giving. We need to be more generous with our time. We need to be more generous with our encouragement. You know, I come from a culture where we leave good things, uh, you know, until the last minute. Meaning that, you know, we, we only start saying, oh, thank you so much. You've been a blessing to me. Not when the person's around, but usually as the person's about to leave our lives, let us learn to be more kingdom and less biased towards our own culture. And let's learn to be more kingdom minded and go like, God, I want to give. And generosity means giving to the kingdom, giving to enrich the kingdom, giving so much so that I begin to prize, see the kingdom of heaven as my prized possession, like how you would see a $5,000 carpet that it is precious, that it is not to be trampled on, that it is something that to hold dear. And so let us learn to be generous because as this young ruler learned, he had an issue with generosity. He loved God, but there was one area that he would not allow God to touch. And that was the area of his finances. And again, that's an unconscious bias. We think that because we serve, because we evangelize, because we are Christian, because we are baptized, because we pray, because we know the Bible cover to cover, means that I am I am so revived, not realizing that it is that one thing, money, generosity, that we are weak at. So let us be Christians that um that's mindful, amen. That that and I'm, the the problem with unconscious bias is that it hits all of us. And it is a byproduct of sin. But the good news is this. And, you know, earlier on I said that of, it, it's, this parable is, not parable, but this, this uh, story between Jesus and the rich young ruler is mentioned in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And I chose Mark because of this one thing. And this is my encouragement as we close. Verse 21 of Mark 10, Jesus looking at him, loved him and said, one thing you still let go, sell all you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Pick up your cross and follow me. But Jesus looking at him and loved him. Mark is the only one of the three gospel accounts that has the word loved him. And that is so important because as God is challenging the biasness in our lives, whether unconsciously or consciously, I want you to know that Jesus is doing it out of love. And with love, he's looking at you. And with love, he's inviting you to change that. Turn that biasness. Surrender that. Repent from that. And follow him. Maybe you're watching this and you're not yet a Christian. I want you to know we're all sinners. We all need God. Nobody is perfect. But Jesus is looking at you. And he is loving you and he's inviting you to follow him. Would you obey that call? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing. And God, even as we learn from this powerful conversation you had with the rich young ruler, and we're unpacking it, Lord, help us to reevaluate our walk with you. Help us not to have an unconscious bias towards you, God. And help us not to be so childish to think that God, because you are good, you cannot correct. And just and so childish to think that because you correct, you cannot be good. Lord, you are both good and you both correct. Help us, Lord, to love both aspects of you. Lord, help us to understand that all of us are guilty of sin. And yes, some of us here, we might have been victorious in many areas of our lives but lord help us never 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 to be so unconsciously biased to think that we've made it and that we've nothing to work on help us to always seek after you and realize lord that all that we have comes from you lord i pray for my brothers and sisters who struggle 
and, and sometimes guilt becomes this thing that eats them up alive and stops them from following you. And because Christianity feels like an impossible standard to live by, but Lord, you gave us the law, but you also gave us your hand and says, follow me. And it is only by your grace, by your love that sustains us, that helps us to be better and helps us to over time live out the law, but not in a self-righteous way, but live out the law to be a blessing to the people around us and to glorify you. And last but not least, Lord, as we prepare to give next Sunday, help us to check our hearts when it comes to generosity. Does money have more of a hold in our life than we realize? Help us to repent from that and help us to realize that generosity is not about rich people giving away a lot of money. Generosity is about enriching heaven and and, and, and enriching the kingdom. Help us to give to enrich the kingdom. Help us to give and help us to be generous, starting financially, but overflowing into every area of our lives. Help us to be generous with our praise. Help us to be generous with our time for each other. Help us to be generous. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. If you've been touched by today's message and would like to invite Jesus into your life, why don't you join me in saying this prayer? Lord Jesus, thank you for paying the ultimate price for my sins by dying on the cross for me. I receive your love and forgiveness and eternal life by faith. Come into my heart and life and be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Day, for that amazing word. We've come to the end of our church service this morning. Will you just allow me to pray? Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for your, your covering and care upon our entire church family. We pray for Pastor Kenneth and Pastor Sandra, all our elders, pastors, church plan coordinators, both here and abroad, as well as all our leaders who serve your house so faithfully week after week. Give us your daily peace and protection and provide us all our needs according to your riches in glory, especially the wisdom to continue to be a church that's in line with your perfect will. Let your joy always be our strength and let our lives always bring you glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you just uh, lift up your hands wherever you are so that I can declare the benediction over you. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. No, that's it from us this week. Have a great week ahead, church, and I'll see you again next week. Bye.